Yay! Yay! Survive! Cool. Let's just do this really quickly so that. Oh, we're live. See chat. Yep, we're live. Games there. And. Yay! Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Unknown Era Podcast. I'm a little <coughs> hot. I'm a little, I'm a little hot. Check one, check two, check one. Cool. Uh, yeah, welcome to the Unknown Era Podcast. This is episode eight. Woo. Going weekly <laughs> now. A um, couple announcements right off the bat before we get into it. Uh, it. We got the Unknown Era Podcast this week to be on iTunes and Google Play. Sweet. So if... If you are more into listening than watching, um, it's available on our SoundCloud, uh, it's available on iTunes, and it's available on Google Play. You just have to search on all of them, Unknown Error Podcasts, and you should be good to go. Um, and yeah, let's just jump into it. So, this week, I'm going to be playing a game. I'm playing Rogue Legacy. I haven't played in a long time. It's fun. Uh, Roddy's got a topic that we're going to talk about, and Rick Bob the Beers. Woo! Woo! And you bought the same beer the, that we had last same week. same beer that we it had was, last week. It was just that good. Because the beer store is closest, and it is, uh, as we all know, many options to choose from. <laughs> many, many lovely options. All right, well, cheers, everybody. Woo! Clink. Yay! Oh, I need to sip. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm going to play. I totally forgot the controls. <clears throat> Do you explain the game? It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, 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 doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, so yeah. I had to come up with the topic. My topic was, what is your fa- or what makes a good movie? And with that, I wanted everyone to also list their top five from their gut so they had no time to think about <laughs> it. So that way, these are those really, truly guts that go straight to what pop into mind when you think of top five. So hopefully we can just do like one by one. So like, what's? Oh, I guess I start first because that's what it looks like on the camera, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Topic. Left, right. All right. Number one for me, one of my gut things is. I don't know. This is a good one for me. It's Spider Man Two. Spider Man Two is one of two? your favorite movies of all time. Spider Man Two is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's like one of the perfect comic that's book movies. That's so funny. Okay, it's you like, need to justify this. It has like Sam Raimi when he's actually still being Sam Raimi. Like, okay, this scene. Have you guys both watched it? Yeah, yeah I, lo- I love the movie, but it's not like I would. It's not a one of favorite. It's one of my favorite ones because I could. For me, one of the things is the replayability. Like when I look at what what makes a good movie is how many times I can watch it over and over. Yeah. And like for this one, I like can watch it like over and over because like the actions look great. And like the like the main villain is actually a villain I care about. Like in all these like new Marvel ones, like the villains are mm, kind of cool, but you super don't really generic. Care. Yeah, you don't really care about them. Yeah. But like Doctor Octopus, I totally care about him. Like when he saw his wife died by like a shatter of glass to the face, I felt for him. So like that's one of my favorite things. And like it has like pivotal scenes that like are just epic looking. Like when Doctor Octopus wakes up for the first time with actual arms, like the whole scene is like Sam Raimi. Like, there's, like, a chick that scrapes, like, the floor, and, like, her fingernails scrape it as it goes. So, guy tries to reach for a chainsaw, and then all of a sudden, like, the octopus arms go at his face, try to kill him. I'm like, it's everything. There's romance, there's action, there's comedy. Like, it's perfect for me. It's, like, the perfect comic book film. And it's not super long and boring, like other films that came out recently. Um, <laughs> how long is that film? It's, like, two hours. Two hours yeah, okay. plus. It's not that bad. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, for superhero movies, for sure. Yeah, I'm it's like, the, it's still, I think it still holds up today if you were to watch it. Like, it still holds up. And, like, the special effects, maybe not seen, so much. So, I haven't seen it in a long time. But, like, it's just it's so while. good. I mean, like, it anime is, is funny in it. And there's people, like, what's that dude from, like, Community has, like, a small cameo in it, uh, Joel McHale. The guy that does a suit. He's in that. He's in it. He's like this like annoying banker. It's the time when he didn't get like the hair stuff, the hair plugs. Like he kind of still had a little balding thing there. Yeah. That's when like how recent he was in it. Like like he was still new and he was kind of funny. I don't even remember that. It was in the bank and he tries to like take a piece of gold and Aunt May like slaps his face. It's like don't you dare. Like there's like little moments like that make good and Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten Dunst is not as irritating in it <laughs> as like the first one and like the third one. Like sure she does like the damsel distress thing, still, 
but like she's not as irritating like she has her whole like storyline of like I'm an actress but it's hard and now I need to choose between an astronaut and Spider-Man <laughs> astronauts every time <laughs> nope astronauts and Spider-Man every time but the commentary I see it's so good I actually even listen to the commentary <laughs> Like, there's one scene where, like, the astronaut guy, they felt bad for him. So, like, apparently he has to jump from a pier to a boat. So, like, they had this one action and they put all this focus on it. Because, like, we need to give him one scene to be heroic because he can't compete with Spider-Man. So they did that scene. So, like, there you go. Look at him going after, like, Mary Jane. This is to give him his chance to shine. Yeah. It's a good movie. It's, like, I can watch it over and over. And, like, it's, like, my top. My gut. That's what I think about on my top. That's your gut. It's my gut. It's Spider-Man. And also, it's I grew up with Spider-Man, too. I grew up with Peter Parker. He's a nerd. And, like, yeah. Hmm. That's my gut top one guy. Not top one, but top five. So I'm not it, ranking it's in that. The top five, okay. It's in the top five yeah. where it belongs in it. I have no idea. But, yeah, Spider-Man, too. I don't know if it's a shocker. I didn't think it would shock you. Part of me felt no, like yeah, you might no. agree. No, no. Yeah. It shocked me. So good, though. Yeah. So good. I, I honestly there... didn't expect any of us to have any superhero movies. Oh, really? Yeah. That's oh, so good. Spider-Man, too. Well, it's because you expect, like, you expect... Coffee and cigarettes. <laughs> no, you, you just expect, like, classic things. Like, I'm sure my, my... I'll just say my number one. It's Empire Strikes Back. Uh, like, mm-hmm. which I know, no, is, like... It's like, yeah, okay. It's not a huge surprise. It's just, like... Um, um, it's the movie that made me, like, just love... Film? Film, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, I loved episode four. Like, I loved the original Star Wars. But, just something about Empire, where it's like, it's a continuation. It's not, it's not, you know, establishing all the characters. It's, there's drama, there's all this other stuff. That was stupid. Uh, dear God. It's gonna be tough. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, like, no, but like with that but, movie, that's the one that has like the epic twist. That was like, yeah, yeah. was that oh, the yeah. original movie that had twists? Like, if that's the, is that the first blockbuster known? No, no, no. Casa Blanca. No. Well, Casa Blanca's twist at the end is is great. So where, is it? Is it like he's, where like uh, he gives? He's he's like he. Uh, what's his name? What's the actor's name, anyways? Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart's Bogart. character. Yeah. He he's like. No, you two just go. I know that I love you, but you have to go and be with him. And then the dude is like, uh, round up the usual suspects and like lets uh, Humphrey Bogart's character get off the hook with it. And like that's a twist because no one expected that. Mm. Well, no one expected the ending for. Oh no, no one. Expected no, it came out no. nowhere. Yeah. But what makes it specifically a good movie then? Um, is it like the dark tones that weren't in the first one? What, or? what makes it a really great movie for me is that um, wow, all these straight suck. I guess I'll just go. Uh, what makes it a great movie for me is the fact that there it has a bit of everything. I think that's one of my reasons for good movies is that it's not just considered one thing. Like I don't necessarily love thrillers and I don't necessarily love just straight comedies. I love movies that have a bit of everything. Where like there's a bit of suspense, there's a bit of comedy, there's some romanticism about it. It has a bit of everything. And so with me, episode five is one of the best culminations of that. And also I'm a huge fantasy person. I love sci-fi and that just brought it all together with, like, uh, how the... I also love how the story splits up. Mm-hmm. Like, instead of all being one single thing, it, like, cuts back and forth between all these different characters that you love and that you want to see what they're doing. And so... It's one of my favorite things. Is like, okay, so here's where, you know, Han Solo and Chewbacca are. Here's uh, Luke on Dagobah, and he's doing his trials with Yoda. And, like, the culmination of all that stuff, like, how it bounces back and forth, and, like, then there's Boba Fett, and then there's this thing. It's all amazing. I love it. I just love, like, that level of sci-fi. Plus, then, it actually had character development instead of the first one, which was, like, 
fit in that thing, really. They're sort of already archetypes? Yeah. Well, yeah. That, that, that's the entire point, is they are just straight-up archetypes. Yeah. The spunky young kid, the wizard, the princess, the rogue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that's, well, that's my number one. It's it's the film that I actually wrote my essay on in order to get into, what in order to get into university. The, Yo, dude, I, can we watch some videos? YouTube? What? I don't know. Want to watch some quality YouTube? What? I don't know. Anyways, right. Rick, you go. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> suspense. Well, I've been thinking about this one for a long time. Really? And it's always going to be. This is your number one. This is my number one. The number one is always going to be. The Fountain, with Hugh Jackman, with Hugh Jackman, and like Rachel and Weiss. Rachel Weisz. I know, <laughs> so I know. Barely anybody likes this movie. Um, I'm trying to remember. It's it. the one where it's like trippy. It's three stories, it's three de- sort like of. three different timelines, right? Not really. Or like they're all together. There's a there's a novel. There's like a there's a contemporary story with his wife and he's dying, or his wife is dying and he's trying to desperately find a cure for her yes and uh and then there's a story that she wrote that is portrayed as them both in like the spanish inquisition yes uh, and, and then there's a weird future bit where you're not entirely sure if it's actually happening in the future or if it's perhaps his finishing the book because she she's like she gives him the book at one point so she's like finish the book like finish writing it so maybe he goes from that point to like whoa yeah um Anyways, so it's not necessarily about the story ambiguity, and I must say the more I watch it, the more it gets cheesy, because it's basically just like, all love all the time. Yeah, is that why you <clears> like it? Because it's all love all the time? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I watched it for the first time when I was 16, oh, and it man. is, what I love about it, what I think makes it a great movie, is its fucking scale. Like, it just, it goes there, you mean? Like, it, it just has goes. no boundaries and it how it talks about love? Yeah, well... It, like, trans... It like, goes over time, space... Yeah, time, space, <laughs> imagination, yeah. fucking everywhere. And the visuals are insane. Who's the director? Uh, that's Darren Aronofsky. Oh, okay. He's the one that did... Wreck him? Wreck him. Did you wreck him? Yeah, no. wreck yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's why. Um... <laughs> And this is going to be, I really love, I think there's at least one more movie that I'll list that is also, like, really good. Yeah. Uh, Economy of Story. Yeah. Is, is great. It's an hour and a half film. Mm. I watched it, I was like, this must have taken three hours of my life. But it didn't? It didn't, but it feels that huge when you watch it. And so that, to me, is the number one, and I think that's what makes a great movie for me. It's like, it's, it, nothing is not needed. Everything is kind of goes okay. And it, it doesn't is, drag. It doesn't do like the like, navel gazing that you see a lot of independent films, where like no. you stare at like I don't know what, like a lake for a very long time. No, okay. no, it's like paced very, very well, and the cinematography in it is fucking beautiful. It's very consistent. Everything has a point. Everything is thought through. It's a lot of you, Jackman, though, isn't it? Like it's, little, well, it's, that's another great thing. It's only two characters basically. Like there's no like the budget got slashed, so they were like, oh, mm. okay, we're gonna make a much smaller version of this and it's still huge it's weird though because I like literally like you're right like no one really talks about the film like no. everyone like I remember when the trailer came out I was like this looks amazing but I never actually got the time to actually watch it it's, you should watch like, it okay, yeah, I should watch it's it it's really good and the because you worry because when sometimes you worry like it's going to be super big and bold like the movie like Big Fish with Tim Burton yeah like, when I saw the trailer I was like it's going to be amazing and then I watch it and I was like yeah, I, I enjoyed Big Fish uh, not gonna be on my list, but no, yeah. I enjoy Big it's not on my list either. No. Uh, so that, to me, is what makes that movie great. The Fountain. Also, what? I gotta just put a nice, like, for the visual effects in space. It's fucking. It was like a gigantic tree in that. No. Yeah, it's a big tree. Yeah. 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 The the traveling through space. <laughs> they do like a. There's a big tree in that one, right? Yeah, there's a big tree. There's like a lot of intense close-ups to Hugh Jackman's face, looking like pained yeah, and like, fine. I don't know, full of grief. Oh the, man, that's so cool though. Literally now I want to watch it because I haven't heard anyone mention that film ever since it came out. Like, no one talks about that film. It's so good. It's weird though. This, I guess it was like cult. I wonder if it has like a cult following. Me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm just, the only, I'm the only person who loves this film as far as I've talked to. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. All right. I guess it's a two move on. <laughs> yeah, this is the end yeah, let's move on. <laughs> no, I, I need to watch it again, though. Now I need to watch it and appreciate it, and then I'll talk to you about it. Yeah. That's probably what something to do. Yeah. Because, wait, have you watched The Fountain Martin? No. Yeah. See? It's like, if you watch the trailer, it looks amazing. But now I need I've to watch it. I've heard of it, but now I've never. All right. 
So my second one, it's a foreign film, and I feel like... Are you fancy? <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> No, really. Oh, okay. I only watch four and <laughs> no, no, no. But, like, okay, it's a four film. Oh, my God. <laughs> that little shit. So, it's like a four film called Confessions. Have you heard of it? By mm-hmm. Usher? No. no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Usher, like, went to Japan and, like, was a producer for films there. <laughs> Do you know? Like, he took a break after Even Justin Bieber. So, yeah. Yeah. No, it's called Confessions. And, okay. literally, it's, like, one of the ones. Like, I have this best friend that, literally, like, he does not stop talking at all. And like during this film, this is the one film in life he actually told me to like shh. He actually told me to shut up. Wow. I was like, what? It's like that good of a film that it made my friend not want to talk and made me shut up. I was like, yeah, this this is something. So literally, what confession is? It's why well, I think it's it's one of like the best like thrillers and you're like you want to watch from start to finish and watch what happens and you're really invested in the characters. And it literally. It's one of those films that I like because it actually has a message or it makes you question something about society. Mm-hmm. So it's like those thinking pieces. It's not something that's kind of like disposable. Like it's like it's it had like a meaning to it, and it has some Radiohead in it too. So that's pretty cool. But the main plot of Confessions is that it's a elementary school teacher who finds out that her um, her child is like like and it wasn't a freak accident that she died, but she realized it was the fault of two elementary school students. So she plots revenge against two elementary Whoa. school students. And in the first, like, ten minutes, this is how it starts. This is how crazy it starts. She gives the whole class milk. And she goes, For there's two students that I put AIDS in your milk. So, like... What the fuck? Yes! And, like, literally, it, like, becomes, like, this mind game. And there's, like, serial killer children in it. And to pointing at the point, like, yeah. just because it's a kid... Do we give them, like, slack, or are kids, like, truly evil? Or are they worse? Yeah, like, so, like, it wow. plays with that so much. Like, it's a whole point where, like, you actually think about it. Because she's taking revenge because, like, the justice system won't do anything because they're protected. So she's taking her own act of vengeance on her child that was murdered by these two kids. So it's, like, it's all in the elementary school. I think thing. I have actually heard of that. It's just so messed, and there's Radiohead, and it goes, and like... Radiohead. Yeah, it's so good, though. <laughs> like, literally the whole time, I was just, like, enthralled in it. And, like, it has these twists, and, like, oh, yeah. it's just super dark. Like, it's one of those films, like, like you have to, like, do it from start to finish. And, like, it's because it's the story of a mom and a child, and the whole questioning of, like, children... Like, can they really be evil? I was like, that's... You don't ask that. Because I find with children in films, people are kind of, like... It's a sensitive topic, understandably. But, like, no one really goes or, like... if a Unless child, it's, like, a weird horror movie or something. Like, The Children? That was a weird one. <laughs> but, like, yeah. But no, not like, the, like The Omen or something like that. True. Yeah. But, like, not... Like, even since but The that's Omen... That's a demon. That's no one has done that. There's I no know, one, but still, it's like... But, like, even since The kill. Omen, no one has done that, though. Like, no yeah. one really questions, like... Like, kids can be quite evil and cruel. So, like, that's why it's one of the ones that made me think. It was really great, and it made my friend tell me to shut up, and that never happens. <laughs> so, like, it has an impact. So, my second one is Confessions, and I would recommend it. If you want, like, AIDS milk and, like, drama and, like, <laughs> like tension and, like, so much, milk. so much feelings. Like, Kids, if you want like, AIDS milk. And then the ending, it literally is, like, an explosive ending, and you're, like... And, like, the last line, you're, like, you literally do those... You know those thing where you find out like something like does a really good burn and you're like slapping your leg and it's like oh yeah. literally it's one of those <laughs> endings you're like oh shit like it's one of those endings for me and then like it has like, a, a woman, gut reaction. A woman tries to get revenge and then it ends in a knee slapper. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. I would totally recommend it. It's amazing. So so that's bad too. Interesting. But do you think what made that movie the story. good was just the story or particularly the, the, story. Like the kind of uniqueness of the story? The uniqueness of the story and also like it felt very personal with like the... Because it's like a mother and daughter story, right? Mm. So it felt very personal. It's like Kill Bill when you kind of felt personal because she's seeking revenge. Like it made you care about the characters. It made you question the characters' motives, and also there wasn't nearly like a good and a bad version person. Right. Like no one was clear to find like, oh, I need to root for this teacher. Like no, this teacher's kind of insane. Mm-hmm. And like even the kids are like, no, these kids are kind of insane too. I understand why they did it. 
So like it makes you question like all the archetypes. It makes you question like what should be a generic storytelling. Like this is the hero. This is the heroine. We should follow them. We should like them because they do this. No, like the fact of the matter is that when she starts by giving like po like like basically mind fucking these children, it's just like oh, okay, I don't know what to expect. Like it it pushes the boundaries of like what stories you can tell. Like it doesn't play it safe, and I think that's why I like it. It didn't mm -hmm. play it safe. Like, it wasn't a story that hurt time and time again. It, like, went somewhere, and it wasn't afraid to go there. Because, like, there's so many movies where, like, you wish they went there, but they, like, pull back a bit, and you're like, all right, cool. So this is just another, like, romantic comedy, I guess. Yeah. Like, so many of them out there. Yeah. Like, it basically, like, went for it. And I was like, gotta appreciate it. Like, they didn't hold back. Yeah. Good. Recommended. I'll watch The Fountain if you watch Confessions. Okay, I'll watch Confessions. Yeah, it's so good. So good. Okay. What's your second so one? So many much? fucking evil paintings. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What's on the paintings? Scary faces. That's what oh, okay. Stop. Gosh dang it. <laughs> Gosh dang it, paintings. Oh yeah. I, mean, I, I the, the funny thing is when I when I hooked up, the fact that we would get like uh, uh, iTunes and Google Play. I, I thought, oh, damn it, this is gonna be fun for anyone that's uh, like listening to the audio version only, and it's like. Talking about the video game, they can't see what it's like. <laughs> I'm playing Rogue your... Legacy, and I'm not doing amazing, but I'm having fun. You can use your words. Yeah. Just I'm cannons. currently just <laughs> traversing a bunch of shit that's happening. There's spikes all over the floor. And now we're gonna put you on the spot. What's your number two, Martin? Yeah. The thing is, so from number one, I don't know. It's really tough to say. But your um, gut instinct, like, what's yeah. a movie that will just come I, at you? Pops like, in your head. that just pops into my head. Yeah. Honestly, you think it's great. Honestly, Little Rascals. Oh, uh, yeah. It's <laughs> one of my favorite movies I've ever... That, that I love that movie. I love the movie so, so much. Like, it's in, like... Every single time, it's like, it's so quotable, it's so funny, it's so adorable. Like, this, it's one of the movies that, like... Where, like I said, like my list is it. It kind of has to um, for a movie for me to be good. It has to have like a lot of it has to have a bit of everything. And that movie is just good fun. I do not want to come down here. Uh, uh, it it's all good fun, but that movie has like a tiny bit of everything. But in like uh, I don't know if you've ever seen have you ever, have either of you ever seen Bugsy Malone? Where it's like a bunch of kids and they're pretending to be gangsters. Oh yeah, I have. Well, yeah. they're not pretending. It's basically they're, the Bugs they are, they are gangsters. They are gangsters. Yeah. So it's the Bugs Malone story, but yeah. as told with children playing gangsters in fucking uh, what was that time during in in his prohibition. Prohibition, yeah. And it, and it's like that where like the danger is on a kid level, but it's still like danger. So like you know the goat like the. Soapbox race and all that stuff and like everything to do with that is like whenever an, an adult comes in that movie it's really funny because the adults just look at the situation and go like this is silly like they're trying to shake out a bank loan from fucking Mel Brooks and they're just dressed as two, as like three kids in a suit and it's great mm, yeah, it, it's just a very <laughs> it's one of the very first movies I ever saw as a kid mm. and I just know that movie like off the top of my head like uh, in terms of like just remembering all the different bits and everything and so I love that movie that's one of my favorite movies ever just because of how fun it is and it also uh, is directed by uh, what's her name she did she did the Wayne's World movie what? Um, and it just it just made me that's another movie where I look back on it and I just think of it as a fun movie and it makes me think like I would love to just do like a silly fun movie like that I would just love to be involved with something that's so weird and crazy like that's just a good fun like yeah so I love it for the story I love it for the way that it's presented uh, it's like it's not like a normal kids movie like I look, at, I look at something like, I don't know, Air Bud. Yeah, there's a lot more going on in and, Little Rascals. Yeah, there's a lot it. more stuff going on. It's like, it's it's the it's the kids' movies that have adult themes, adult themes in them that then parents and kids can watch them. 
and enjoy them for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the reason why I love old cartoons. Like, because kids are, there's things in them that kids can be like, oh, this is fun, whatever. And then adults can watch it and find other things funny, like SpongeBob. SpongeBob is really funny mm. for kids. But then there's <laughs> random little things in there as an adult you can just look at and, like, think it's the silliest thing in the world and it's really funny. So that's why I love it. There's, there's a lot of really funny... It's just a whole hard good movie. Yeah, I would say, like, to have it on top, it's good. I think it makes... Because it's hard to do a family film. Yeah. Like, I would imagine just to be entertaining adults and children, like, it's hard. And, like, Little Rascals is one, like, if you talk to a lot of people our age, like, it's the one that they hold, like, dear to their hearts. It's a really good movie. Yeah. yeah. I need to watch it. I haven't watched it. It's got one of the... I watched Casper, but I haven't watched Little Rascals. <laughs> I, I'm on, I just have the Whoopi Goldberg cameo in my head. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good oh, one. Oh, there's your mom. And he's like, she's like, oh, and you're like, whoopee. Oh, dang. Like, whoopee, it's your mom, whatever. I just remember the kid with, like, the hat and like, the black dude. Like, I just remember them having some cool, like, bro, like, bro-ship. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, like, I like that from what I've seen. I'm like, oh, man, they look yeah. like best of that's friends. Buck, like, yeah. Buckwheat and, um, Like, Lenny and Carl. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's Buckwheat and, uh... Who's the other kid? It's not Spanky. It's not Froggy. It's... I really want to remember his name now. Not Porky? No, that's not a name. <laughs> <laughs> that's another movie. But but yeah, it's like those those two of my favorite scenes because it's like there's the dollar song where it's like I got a dollar. No, oh, I got a dollar. Yeah. I got a dollar. <laughs> hey 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 hey. It's like who thought of this? It's genius. Or like the pickle dance. Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> the same song. I'll trade I'll trade your pickle for a dickle. How about two cents? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> it's just so stupid. I love it, though. Oh, man. Now I need to do a whole, watch a whole bunch of movies. Now I need to do a whole bunch of movies. Little Rascals, The Fountain. Watch these. That's a weird uh, yeah, it's marathon. A weird, it's a, this, is a, <laughs> this is an already much weirder than I thought we were going to go for. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, what's your second one? And like <clears throat> maintain the weirdness of our... Uh, well... Hello, Harfy Hartford. Hello. Hello. Sorry, good bird. Uh... <laughs> I suppose I'll go in probably the totally opposite direction of cute and cuddly. Um, Human centipede. Oh no! I can. <laughs> oh my I, god! If you I will that. not say a horror movie. I hate horror movies. I get scared and can't Aww, sleep. There's some good horror movies. Though. I get scared. And I get scared a, and can't it's sleep. It's okay, Rick. It's I know it's a movie, but my brain doesn't think so. Mm. Um, or I guess my body. I don't know. It's too real. Too real. My body. But My I'm body. gonna say I'm Waltz gay. with Bashir. If you guys haven't seen Wait, this, what? I've never heard of it. It's that. called Waltz, Waltz with Bashir. Bashir. It's a documentary. It's an animated documentary. Don't show me. You, are, <laughs> you should watch it. You're getting fancy with your answers. <laughs> I'm sorry. This, this is a movie that, like, actually, I don't mean to be fancy. <laughs> But it's. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Like, it's yeah. like all, right I don't all, mean to be fancy. All my movies it's... are like, are like blockbusters or like things like that. Like I can like, openly say that I love. Like, <laughs> I know like it's a. That is stupid. Uh, I know it's a film school thing where people are like, oh, movies, and I love oh, movies. <laughs> like, like that. Ones, well, I'm like, ones. well, I'm like, well, I'm like, you guys seen Terminator <laughs> Two? That shit's Ooh. off the chain. Like, <laughs> those are my answers. But anyways, Terminator Two is really good. Explain, explain. Um. What is Waltz with Bashir about? Waltz yeah. with Bashir is, is about dance? the filmmaker is an Israeli guy, okay, uh, Ari Fulman, and he, um, as you maybe maybe some people don't know that you have to do mandatory military service uh, in Israel. Okay. So when he was eighteen, ish, um, Israel invaded Lebanon mm -hmm. uh, in nineteen eighty four. Six or right. something, um, and basically, it's a it's an account of an older himself uh, having suffered PTSD. Oh shit! Uh, trying to retrace where he was this in the invasion intense. and what what he did because he can't really remember. Um, and it's animated. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, what's the animation like? It's like a it's a combination of flash 3D and uh, like traditional animation. Oh, it's, wow. it's like very unique. Nothing else looks like it. Um, hmm. Interesting. It's just the most in in creating the world that way immerses you in it. It's realistic. 
and you don't it's not like you watch it you're like oh this is like a cartoon yeah you're watching it and you're like oh my shit because you're just so invested in what people are saying and the whole story do you think like it was would it be different if it was like live action yeah to totally right. it would be totally a different thing because it's more it's much more immersive it's very cinematic hmm. um but they do still do the traditional like you're being interviewed so mm. they have a guy and they're being interviewed and, and like, he's just he's an animated he, he's an animated guy in a chair talking like is it is it kind animation of animation like, in real life like, is no. it like scan kind of animation no no they didn't or is it Roger Rabbit <laughs> um <laughs> like, no it's not it's not like there's no live action bits in it and they didn't rotoscope over people yeah it's just so like it's just they just totally did it. It's like realistic, like trying to draw, make them look human, like, or is it more they like look stylized? Like they look peanuts, <laughs> not like peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bunch of peanuts. Like it's peanuts, very, right? it's a very intense topic, but they look like peanuts. <laughs> uh, no, no, they look pretty, pretty realistic, and it's a very interesting film, and is the most devastating documentary That's that you'll ever watch. Because in the end, I'm not going to ruin it for anybody, but he breaks the whole illusion for you. And uh, and then you're sort of complicit in. Is it like one of those like you pulls pulls you out of the rug kind sort of thing? Like it just sort of, but not like oh fuck you is like oh. oh. You're like whoa. So do you like it more? Like is this your top because it's one of those films that like I love it because it's so. Well, one the story would be good anyway. Mm -hmm. Like that's a good documentary no matter what. But dealing with something that's in the past and with memory, like he goes into some sort of strange stuff where he, like he animates things that aren't there and it's a very good accurate representation of oh so is it like what um, memory does to you uh, what's mm. what's the is there like structure to this is it more like kind of like it's pretty you, linear do you uh, remember the like he goes out being like i want to find out what i did and then he finds out what he did do you remember mm. the ifc film by the dude that like won won the oscar where it's like he's interviewing uh, an animator no it's called oh ryan yeah yeah, yeah. That one. So it's like that, where like he animates like these weird things in the background, and like that don't act aren't sort actually of. there, or like these weird interpretations that he has of things. Sort of. Okay. But it's more like it's more like animating the stories that the people are telling. Mm -hmm. Okay. And sometimes in weird ways because memory is weird, fuzzy. Memory is not accurate. Memory right. is weird, and you have like a feeling. And how do you present a feeling to somebody in a movie theater? You can animate something. Much easier than much you easier than you can just. And the score. Look, the score. Mm. So it's like basically wonderful soundtrack. Like all components make it a good film. Like you're saying score, like I'm story, saying style. Score, story, style is so perfect for it. Mm. Like not every documentary can do that because if you're just going to animate any documentary then it sort of doesn't work but it's just it's a perfect mm -hmm. combination of all the things. Man, you got a documentary, you got a family movie. I've not seen Walt. Like literally when I saw like it was on Show Me, and it's like, well, it's like, no. Like, it, it doesn't have, like, a title that would be like, oh, I'm going to totally watch this. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's just it like, well, it's Bashir. Who's Bashir? What I, what I should do is I should just send you the trailer for it, because if you watch the trailer, you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to watch this. There's another this. doc. There's, like, a doc called, like, something like Van Gogh. Or literally, right. they actually, like, painted, like, every, every frame. Every frame. Yeah, it hasn't come out yet. I it's, really want to see that's it. Common. I was like, that's coming. That's going to be fun. It's going to be fun really, to watch. I really want to see that. But that's a, that's a fiction film. Fiction, yeah. 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 It's a biopic. I still want to see that. Yeah. No, it's... Like, I always like to take a different style that, that makes sense for the story. Like, it doesn't... So it didn't yeah. seem, like, haphazard. It didn't seem like, oh, we're going to do it because we can no. do it. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. There's no moment that... There's nothing that breaks... Mm. So economy. Your, and all, I can't even remember how long it is. I think it's about two hours. Oh, whoa, that's pretty. Nah. It's not crazy long. I remember when movies used to be like an hour or uh, like three hours. Well, Inter movies were like an hour and a half. Intermission. And then movies were like two and a half I hours. Intermissions. I wish they'd bring intermissions back. I would sit in a movie. For Oh, more than I don't think anyone would read like that much of a script nowadays, though. Do you think someone would actually come down like, oh, this is like 200 pages? Sure. I feel like no, they'd be, I mean, like, throw it out. I just mean that Same rules apply. You read the first ten, and if you're not into it, True. you throw it away. I just mean, like, I wish movies would... I love the idea of, like, it's... I still love the idea of, like, I watch some older movies where intermission was involved, and so it goes, like, like um, the Beatles help. Mm. It's a great example where like it goes up and then the intermission 
was a point where people could get up and go to the bathroom or go up and get a drink. But then they bookmark it by just, like, these really two really quick, like, 30-second weird scenes that, like, it's the Beatles comedy style, so mm-hmm. it, it doesn't make any sense. But, uh, it get, like, it's like, here's the chapter one, here's chapter two. And I like that kind of sectioning of it. Yeah. Instead of, like, one long thing, it's like, you kind of have a break and then come back to it. Yeah. But I, but I think now with how, like, certain things like, say, Marvel movies, they probably can't do that because they don't want people to suddenly go out and... <laughs> Give them an uh, actual opportunity to walk out of the movie? Oh. I think there's that. Yeah, there's <laughs> definitely that. Like, there, there's no doubt about it. There, that is definitely like, a thing. They're not going to come back. But it's also, but it's also they don't want people to get taken out of it because they think, like, they probably think, like, oh, if, if people leave, then they're too stupid to remember what happened and <laughs> other stuff, so... I don't know. Sorry, that's a bit of a digression. Perhaps a topic for another time. Uh, why are movies longish? True. Long ish. But like, <laughs> that, like the whole part. It's still the why whole part. Like movies, why it makes it a favorite movie, right? Why were movies four yeah, no, hours yeah. long? And yeah. It why, feels so long. Yeah. Why were movies four hours long? And when the they could have been so much shorter. Sixties and seventies, and then why were they ninety minutes in the nineties, and now they're three hours? Well, that's because of editing and people. Yeah. That, yeah. It's totally another topic. But yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. But what's, what's your number three, I suppose? Oh, yeah, but I'll keep the pretentious on a roll. <laughs> oh, my God. This person's huge. Yeah. No, no. Look at this. Oh, he's so what? big. It's a girl, because it has a bow. But he has a beard. Right. What? What? Yeah. Well, whatever. Pro- you know, why not? <laughs> pretentious. Can I? This is, this is okay, so the third so one, pretentious, is... Oh, God. Fine. It's before sunset. <laughs> Before sunset. Is it the second one? The second one. The second one. Yeah, the second one. It's part of the Richard Linklater trilogy. Yeah, yeah. Like, we're basically just walking and talking. Like, oh, honestly, okay. at first, like, I was like, God, this is walking and talking. Like, like, we were talking earlier about the movie called Coffee and Cigarettes, and literally, I was, my attention span was, like, not ready for it. But for some reason, it was before sunset. I literally get confused because it's love before. It's like, this before, I've seen all of them from before. Yeah, yeah. Before sunrise, sunrise to sunset, sunset and midnight, and I love sunset the most because, like, it plays with like the realism of the actual relationship, but still like the hopeful, like youthful, like love is awesome and lasts forever. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, so that's literally that's my third one, and then li- I just like it because of the relationship. Like it, it's one of those movies like they actually come back to like these characters like what ten years after they did the first one. Yeah, and you actually like just from like looking at them, you see like the amount of age that they went through and the stories behind it. Are they and, together like, in the beginning of the movie? Uh, in the beginning of what? Sunrise? No, it's like ambiguous at the end of sunri- uh, Sunrise. Like literally, what happens in Sunrise is that they stay on the train and they're like, we'll meet again, let's meet here again. And oh, in you, 10 years. And you never find out. And then in Sunset, you actually find out. So like, it's, I find it interesting because it's like a romantic comedy or a movie that actually no, shows like... Well, no, it's not a comedy. <laughs> no, it's not. Sorry. Portraits it's certainly of not funny. Portraits of genre words. But like, it's one of the ones where like, it actually shows you like the after of like, they kiss... And then everything ends happily ever after. But this movie actually shows, like, no. Oh, wrote the thing, yeah, okay. Yeah, now like, I'm remembering. Yeah, like, it literally opens they, like, up. They, broke up or whatever. They went away. They went away. Like, they, it starts off with, like, oh, you didn't go. Like, it starts off playfully, like, with the mind games people play with right, each other. Yeah. Like, it feels like a real relationship, and we're just jumping into it. Like, like for me, what it is is, like, when movies, like, it's characters I love, or, like, the feelings that it creates, or, like, things that it reminds you of your own past. And literally, it feels like a, like a relationship that you experience and everything like that because like the mind games that people play in relationships I thought it was funny because in the beginning they, they play off like yeah I'm doing totally well you know like I had a like I had a, like a boyfriend and like we went really well like and like oh I have a wife and kids like they play off like like trying to say like oh I'm, I'm doing fine but then like it just destroys that by the end of the film and there's like for me it's the pivotal moment in that film is like literally they're just in a limousine and she's just like tears him to shreds and it's like it's like you wrote a fucking book about me and you make me sound like this wonderful woman oh, right, like yeah. but it's not that like you make me I want to be the person and then she like like it d- dives into like her very heartbreak like there's this whole like monologue that I feel like some like actors will just take and use because yeah. I would watch it and see how they perform it like but it was basically how like 
She says that everyone she's ever dated managed to like, all of a sudden get a husband and have a wonderful life. And she's like, everyone just fucks me and all of a sudden they have a wonderful life. I want a wonderful life. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's not fair. I'm like, this is gold. I'm like, no one sees this. Like, in like Catherine Heigl movie, it's just like, oh my god, I have a man now and like, everything's wonderful. It never goes like, to the point where like, fuck everybody, relationships <laughs> suck, like, this is the worst. Like, I am totally messed up right now. And I'm like, it literally, it's like, it builds... Like, the conversation at the beginning is almost to the point of, like, pointlessness. It's like, mm. guns, oh my god. Like, sometimes you're serious, but, like, it's more of, like, how you actually have a conversation with someone or get to know someone. It's, it's like, you start off little, like, like, random things, icebreakers, and all of a sudden you hit that moment where, like, everything becomes real. And I think, for me, like, it, it's, like, a, it's, like, one of my favorite relationship films. And, like, for me, in like, everyday life, too, like, why I relate to it is because, like, that's how I see relationships with friendships as well like for me it's like you start off a little and then you reach that point in your relationship where you just like shit gets real and then you know from that on you're like okay we're gonna be good friends from this point <laughs> yeah so like that's a like for me i choose it because like it has that like a gut feeling it's like i think of it because like i think of julie delpy and her breaking down or like ethan hawk looking at her thinking about whether or not he's gonna miss a plane and go to his wife while she just sings to him I'm like, oh, is, she, is he going to miss that plane? And then obviously it cuts there and you never know. It's the perfect middle because if you watch Before Midnight, it literally just like takes it even further into reality of like marriage. Oh, yeah. And like it just destroys you. In I regards to, like watch. Romance. I was like, oh. It's tough. It's just it's a stressful time. Yeah, it's that just movie like is it's all tough. stress. And like it felt like it's an accurate depiction of like like a modern day relationship that's not like plagued by like, other real life issues like you know like paying bills and stuff like it takes that out like obviously but like on the heart of the matter of just what like, keeps people wanting to stay together like I think it's one of the movies that few movies that actually show what it means to actually stay together and like what you think about as you go on in the relationship so like it's real and that's why it's my third one. Because it's real. It's real. Because it's real. And you feel something when they have their when it's they like really break. Real. Like there's so few movies that are like, oh shit, I feel for this person. Like I felt for Julie Delpy when she broke down in that limousine. I literally felt for her. Because before that, she was just showing him like, this is Paris. Look how beautiful Paris is. Then she just like breaks down. I'm like, oh, that came out of nowhere, but it didn't come out from nowhere. Yeah, yeah, I would say that. It's so real, guys. You yeah, have realism. But like, I wouldn't watch Before Midnight because that takes all hope. <laughs> yeah, it takes all hope of like wanting to get married and have kids. It takes all of that out. Like, it makes it seem miserable. But they're in a beautiful place, which is something to aspire to, maybe. True, I guess. For some, if you're just... down to be slightly unhappy. No, like that's the one. And then, like, it still matches me to kind of be hopeful. Yeah. Right? Like, I think that's the hard part. Like, I know there's like those downer movies. Yeah. And I find those kind of difficult to watch. Oh, you think they're gonna do another? one? I don't think we're gonna do another one. I don't think maybe, but I don't know what they talk about. I don't know. We don't. You know, we never see old people, so. Like, I wonder how like to even make that script. I don't even know how that works. But yeah, it's interesting. That's why, like, even to come back to it and make a script, like everything behind it, like that's why I love that film. The trilogy, yes, but that the middle one is my favorite. The middle one, one yeah. Yeah, because the first one is too lovey dovey. It's like let's listen to like so a record. So eyed. Let's listen to like a record and like let's lie down in this cemetery and like yeah. Look at the stars. Like, talk to each other like, oh, all night. We'll stay up all night. Yeah, but then the <laughs> second one just ruins it. Like, no, it doesn't last, guys. It sure, if we watched last. that when we were like 14, we'd be like, yeah, I love this. <laughs> love this. I'll, I'll stay up all night talking to a girl. Yeah. Now it's like, I don't want to go sleep in. Yeah. Sweet. It's like, and they grew up, right? It grows yeah. up with you. Like, not yeah. many movie films besides Toy Story that like, grows up with its audience. True. Yeah. <laughs> so it's one of those, like, weird films that, like, it just, I don't know, it does so many things beyond it. Like, it, it grows up with the characters and you jump in. And, like, it, yeah, it's like, you can literally apply it to real life. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a freaky, freaky bunch. Yeah. Have you, did you like it? I've, I've seen them all. Uh, I gotta say no, but that's because it's too real. Too real? Yeah. yeah. Because most of the times when I watch a movie I'm looking to escape a little a little something mm. or like maybe educate myself about something or something weird yeah um, but yeah watching two two people traverse Europe I'm like eh. <laughs> not true not, not to relegate it to that because obviously the writing in it is really good but that makes it like well like I find it interesting hearing about people's favorite films because like oh I wonder why you like that like oh it's so you're that kind of like 
Like, you really like the emotional movies, or you really like the action, like, you really like fantasy and escaping. Like, you learn a lot about people, like, through their favorite films. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm very relationship, you guys. What? I'm drink a beer. What? <laughs> what? Heartache, what? And also, I'm Filipino. I mean, like, if you look at any Filipino movie, it's full of heartbreak, like, and all tons of crying. So, yeah. It's in my blood for drama. <laughs> for drama. <laughs> Even dramatic. though I don't like it, it's a in my blood. for the dramatic. <laughs> yep. Can't you tell, guys? I'm super dramatic. <laughs> uh, how about you, Martin? Number three. Jesus Christ. Uh, gut, 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 gut. Zoolander. No. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Uh, the movie that comes to... It's hard. <laughs> the thing is, I'm like a huge fan of sagas. Because I like a longer, more expansive story. Mm. So, I'm going to leave one till... Hey, look, there's Santa. Um, <laughs> Why is he there? I don't know. Hi, AC Adventure 1. How are you? Oh, wait. We are good. We are good. We are, we are fine. I'm trying about films, it's lovely. I don't know. I'm yep. trying to remember if I remember this person or not. I don't, I don't recognize the, the name. Anyways. Um, so, I'll leave that one for the end. We have about... How long do we have left? Uh, we have, like, 30 minutes left. Um, I'm good. Making good time. Honestly, the first thing that comes to my head, it's a pairing, because that's the only way I can explain the one, is Die Hard, but I love Die Hard-esque movies, because I love 80s action movies. Like, some of my favorite movies of all time have to be, like, Tango and Cash with Sylvester Stallone and fucking Kurt Russell. Um, I love the movie. It's the silliest thing in the world. It's great. I love Terminator 2. I love all these. Like, I love 80s and 90s action movies. Just, they're some of the greatest things I've ever seen just because of how out of the box they get to be. Um, but honestly, Die Hard. But then recently, because no one likes this movie, but I love it, is White House Down. I... <laughs> Love nice. White House Down. It is so good. It's silliest shit ever. It's fucking Chang Tatum <laughs> and Jamie Foxx, and it it honestly does the Die Hard formula perfectly. Dude, wrong place, wrong time. Suddenly is in the cot in the middle of this thing. He, the only thing he wants to do is get the person that he loves out of that situation. In order to do that, he has to become a hero, which he doesn't want to do. That's great. I love it. And then it follows, like, I'm sure no one gives a shit about spoiling that movie. But, um, it, uh, fucking terrorists come in, they try to, they want to capture the president, whatever. Uh, Jamie Foxx is the president, which is stupid, uh, but it's great. Um, and then it follows the same kind of thing where, like, he picks one off and he starts picking off all of these other terrorists and they're trying to look for them while they're still trying to solve the main thing uh, they're still trying to go with their mission they don't care if there's someone there but they're sending people to try to get them and then it becomes a bigger and bigger problem to them and then eventually there's like the like you know how in Die Hard there was the German with like the AUG gun that he has a fist fight at the end where he hangs him with the chain mm-hmm. there's that dude in this movie where Chang Tatum and this dude have a fight within one of the press rooms and then he like wraps a, a vest that has a bunch of grenades on it around him and ties it around his neck and then he ties him to a chair and then he just like kicks the chair over and pulls the pins and then he just runs out of the room and the dude's just like nah! he's trying to pull off these grenades and then he blows up <laughs> and then at the very end there's a twist just like at the end of Die Hard, where all of a sudden they're like, all right, everything's over, Gruber's dead, and then all of a sudden the dude comes back and he's alive. In this one, it's like, no, we actually know who the bad guy is. It's James Woods. It was your right-hand man. And then it's like this whole... It's it's just great. It's <laughs> nonstop fun. I love that movie. But then that's the same reason why I love Die Hard, is because it's like it's got comedy, suspense, all that stuff. And like... It's actually and the other thing about Die Hard is it's like one of my favorite Christmas movies. Oh my god! <laughs> oh god, god yeah, the best. Because <laughs> it takes place at Christmas. It's so great. Oh. The second one's also the the second one is also great. Can you do a reaction to a video? No. Um, <laughs> Shut I don't down. know what video. I don't know what video it is, but no. Um, but yeah. So you dank memes, and we we're the dankest of memes. Uh, 
But yeah, no, I love. <laughs> totally up my head. Like, what? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I love like that movie. It's so, it's so great. It's just absolutely incredible. So wait, so this one is Die Hard or White House Down? It's it's just that like the kind of genre. Genre, like no I fair. Love, you find the loophole. No, <laughs> very but, specific but, but, like, but, like, formula. But like that you have to copy. Die Hard formula. Yeah, the Die Hard formula is just great. Like the second one. Like, I love the Die Hard franchise. This is like set up and there's just shitload of action. Yeah. 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 I won't lie, but like, I literally, when I saw White House Down, I was like, Channing Tatum, oh my god. Like, literally, I was just like, I don't know if I want to watch this. Because I watched Die Hard and loved Die Hard. Like, I watched it for the first time he, last year with the drinking it. game, and it was amazing. <laughs> It was like the best. It's like drink every time you see a Christmas ornament. I'm like, it just got better and better. It was just an amazing thing. But when I saw White House Down, I was like, really, Channing Tatum? Channing Tatum is actually. I actually really love Channing Tatum. I just remember him. He didn't. What he had before that? All he had was Step Up before that. That he was well known for. Was it Step Up? Oh yeah. Because yeah. like that's how I knew him. I was like this guy that uh, wants to be a dancer when incorporating ballet and hip hop. And I was like, I don't know about this guy. Was it Step Up? That's how you. I feel like that that's how like he got first, known. Yeah. Oh, I know it was like Magic Mike and all that stuff, but like he, no. he could he could be he he could easily be the next um, uh, uh, Steven will, will no uh, oh, Jesus. no one will ever be the next Steven Seagal. No, no, one will he be has the ended Steven. that for himself yeah. and everybody afterwards. No, he could easily be the next. Um, I can't remember the name. Who played John McClane? Son of a bitch. Why am I Bruce Willis. Yeah. Bruce Willis. He could easily be the next <laughs> Bruce Willis. Like, I could see that. Yeah, he has the saying. opportunity there, and like, he's. I I think he could easily do something. He he's a bit too pretty to be the common man, but he. I think give him a couple more years, and he's definitely. He's definitely on his way to be to get more roles like that. Unless, you know, like, what is that? Was he in G.I. Joe? He was in G.I. Joe. Was he in G.I. Yeah. Joe? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Wait, Bruce Willis or? Uh, Wait, was Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis was in G.I. Yeah, yeah. Joe. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was. That's weird. God. <laughs> but, yeah, I love, I love that movie. It's just so silly is and it a- awesome. I just love being, I love the fact that with those type of movies, some people take them really seriously. While, really, you just have to let your mind go into this world where this shit could happen and them turning around and saying a badass line and then going in that like isn't just <laughs> silly and stupid you you just have to let yourself be like yeah go in there and fuck them up and like you I guess I, motherfucker like you're seeing like escapism like yeah. literally escape. oh yeah this oh, is yeah. like a movie like a, just you, escape you just you just gotta let it go and just go in balls out i love it no, those are good ones like those crazy action films that go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've never really watched. I haven't seen Expendables just because it's like I don't know. There's so much. There's a lot. Cause basically, they lot. combine yeah. every one of your favorite action stars into yeah. one. Mm-hmm. And that, that, that's the only reason I'm kind of like, eh. It's like who you're gonna so focus much. on. Yeah. Cause like Jet Li's in it. I'm like, oh, what are they do with Jet Li? He, 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 he did nothing with Jet Li. He, he, okay. he barely do anything. That was really yeah. sad because he's like the best one. There's oh, yeah. so many people. Oh man, all those Jet Li films. Oh, those rap. Uh, the one oh, I guess I would die. Okay. Yeah. I watched those. I still remember like that one dude that's like put the nuts in your mouth. That was in like Romeo Must Die. Yeah, yeah. Like, nuts. Yeah, and like me and my cousin just kept on repeating that over and over when we watched that film because <laughs> it's a ridiculous line. Put these nuts in your mouth. I was like, but, so weird. Yeah, that's that's one of my one of my favorite. I guess it was. It's like a club. Like that formula. It's like it can't. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's hurry up. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Number three. Uh, good, 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 economy good. of Story. I've got like a few. I've got like a short list of like Economy of Story movies, but Choose top one. top of that is uh, gonna be Layer Cake. Uh, I haven't seen that. I know you referred to it though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's great. Guy Ritchie esque uh, film but more serious because now I can't remember uh, Matthew Vaughn yes because that's Matthew Vaughn's first direction directed directorial debut debut um, really kick ass an hour and a half <laughs> again uh, nothing is there for no reason and that's mostly what I'm looking for in movies 
Mm. Uh, unless it's a Malik movie, but <laughs> that's different. Um, if it's like an, if it's an art house movie, then go nuts. Um, but if you're trying to tell a story, don't fucking take me anywhere where I don't want to be Marvel universe. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> Two leg shots. No, there's a like I'm most most movies these days are really terrible at telling stories. I find. Um, like, so, like, what do you find with Marvel that makes it? No, I'm just curious. No, nah, they just bloated. True, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And, and they, just, they I, need to copy the Indiana Jones formula, which they haven't done. What's the Indiana Jones formula? Isn't it just like well, an adventure and you go for the adventure and that's it? Yeah, but there's more There's more mystery. Like, they can have more mystery than they're having. Okay, well... And I just don't like the formula they've come up with, with like... Oh, there's like a big bad... It's just like bad. any action movie now, too. It's like there's... There's not one bad guy. There's two bad guys. The bad guy, the real bad guy, isn't really in this film. He's, in he's gonna be in another film, and he's gonna have his other other bad guy. Oh, okay. Fighting you. I mean, like how they do like the Easter eggs and everything. So you find with Layer Cake, it's just like simple, straight to the point. Yeah, Layer Cake. It's like one movie. What's like a Layer Cake about? It's just basically gangster. It's a, yeah, it's a gangster. So yeah, what is that movie about? <laughs> What's the <laughs> movie I really it's love? About? Like... It's about something. I know it because I really love uh, it. No, no, it's this, uh, <laughs> it's this drug dealer who's really good at dealing drugs. And his whole thing, he says it right at the beginning of the movie, he's like, if you ha- uh, have a plan and stick to it. So he's, he's retiring. Mm-hmm. The film starts when he's about to retire. Okay. And then they're like, no, you can't retire. You're too good at this. And he's like, but I want to retire. And then it turns out there's like he gets sucked into like a, like, like a kind of above his rank kind of Scandal? Yeah. Um, where his boss is like, not on the level. So is it like, so it's, is it, it's sort of like, a, it's a little bit of a King Arthur story, to be honest. A what kind of story? Yeah, a little bit of a King Arthur story. King Arthur story. Like in the end, like I'll still spoil it. In uh, the end he becomes like the king. Oh, okay. Uh, so is it like one of those like journey heroes that you like journey, like they go through an arc, obviously every movie has an arc. In it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but like it makes, is it like a feel good film? Oh no! Oh okay. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. But that's why I say it's like guy. It's Guy Ritchie esque because it's it's not dark, it's but it's not funny. It's so, it's there's like some light ish bits, but it's not like really intense. How would okay say it like you know how like you know like you have oh a favorite film and you want someone to really God. watch it? Like how would you promote this to make us watch it? Because right now it's like. <laughs> It's a more intense Guy Ritchie film. Okay. I'm not no. a Guy Ritchie film. No, why am I here? No. What's a Guy Ritchie film besides, like, you know, the one with the Madonna? Oh. Guy man, Guy that's Ritchie. not a Guy Ritchie film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Lock, Stock, Two Smoking Barrels. Right. Um, yeah. Snatch. What's the other one? Oh, rock yeah, and Roller. I love Rock and Roller. Uh, he just, he did in the past year or so, he did uh, Man from Uncle. Yeah, right. Now, well, now he's into these other things. Sherlock mm-hmm. Holmes, but. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So layer cake. Yeah, so layer I cake could is there. Fight that boss. What's your fourth? My fourth is I'm gonna go with the family do theme four, now. Do four and five. Oh, four and five. Okay. Yeah. So I was time. Oh god. How much I have? We have fifteen. Minutes. Okay, so four and five. <laughs> so fourth uh, going family is Paranorman, and Paranorman. Paranorman, man, that gets me. Mm. And then like fifth is Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind overall. Yeah, just because like everything is involved in it. Paranorman it's just because it's like like you said with Little Rascals it just it gets a nostalgia feeling of being a kid and I always like the story of misfits like any type of like people that don't really get along find how own friendship together and go on crazy adventures like I always love that kind of storyline because like it it gets home to like when you're a kid and you feel like an awkward kid like no one understands me like it's it because if he fills that mold and he gets friends at the end like you always when you're a kid you just want friends and so like this one he gets friends and it has a whole supernatural vibe and like I love supernatural stuff like he's a guy that can see ghosts and it has like family okay, stories yeah. like it has like a storyline about his grandma and like shit that shit gets to me hard I was just like literally no. he talks to his like dead grandma and I'm like oh my god like that just makes me want to cry and like then there's like little moments like I think they, it's like one of the same things. Like it's like if you see a theme with my my selection, is that it's real, and it's like good character moments. It's happening. Just look how tiny I am, <laughs> and that smoke is ice stink. 
This game is uh, hilarious. Uh, it basically, you, basically what it is, well, I didn't even explain the very beginning, is you just keep going through the dungeon. If you die, the dungeon reforms itself. So it's a new dungeon every time. And you're trying to get through the dungeon without dying. Um, and so you have to go through all these different things to open up this boss door. That, that's the very end of the game. But basically, when you die, you then move on to the next, um, you move on to the next, like, heir of your family. And then you, no, you, get, to pick, you get to pick from three, and they all have different traits. So this one's a dwarf and smells bad. Oh, poor him. So there's this black smoke that's coming up. <laughs> also, it's a girl because it has a bow. Wait, have you guys uh, seen Paranorman? No. No, I actually uh, haven't. No, actually haven't, yeah. But, like, it's a good family film, and, like, they, it's the ones, too, like, you know how usually parents are, like, not really involved? Like, these ones that I think parents are funny, like, has this one shot of Paranorman, or Norman, obviously, just, like, he's just looking at his parents, and all you see is your, like, bloated abdomens, and I felt like, it's literally, like, his, oh, his head, right. and it's just, like, an abdomen at him as they talk about him, and, like, for me, like, that's an accurate right. description of, like, what it is to be a kid, and literally, it's just, you see these, like, your parents are, like, above you, and literally the words mean nothing when you're a kid, because yeah. you're just, like, they're being, you're not child. listening, you're not, right. And so you could, but you don't. Yeah, so I would recommend it because it's a family film and it's heart. So like I said earlier, like I like character moments and like things that make you feel, and it has a lot of those little things interspersed in it. Sounds like you're into the uh, like the emotional payoffs. Yeah, because yeah. like I'm gonna be invested in like these 90 minutes. I want like feel <laughs> something from I want it. it. Like I want to be like, oh, that's it. Like that's cool. Like I don't, I want to feel something. And Paranormal makes you feel something. And then Eternal Sunshine is the same thing. It's the whole idea of like your memories and how yeah. to take them away. It, like it's one of the ones that ask you a question. In a world where you can take away your memories and it's totally legal, totally fine, would you? Like I love those things that are high concept. Yeah. And like it does totally plays with that. And the way it's the only film too with the director Michel Gondry. It's the only film where like I feel like his kind of visuals match like the story. Sometimes with this film's like that did that need to happen? But like it does happen. But this one it makes perfect sense because it's your memories, it's so fuzzy and makes no sense and everything's just beautiful. Like the last scene is like of the first memory of meeting I don't know, I can't remember her name, Kate Winslet and it's like this house breaking down as like his memory is disappearing and it's only like it's completely pitch black except for like moonlight and like just a spotlight on their face and I was like this is beautiful this is amazing and I'll pass it on because time because <laughs> time um so my fifth is going to be the entire Lord of the Rings franchise because <laughs> I love sagas like I, I, I it's one of my favorite I That's... love King one movie. So that's four or five. I love, I love, I love, <laughs> yeah. I love just, I love stories. That's why, I like, I, I honestly have not gotten into Game of Thrones yet, but I know, like, what I kind of want to do is I didn't really get into it at first, but I want to, once it's finished, like, maybe, maybe this fall or something, go and watch all the seasons. Yeah. Because I love... It's going to be a real treat. No, no, I know that. I also, like, no spoilers already, so I don't really care, but, like, I'm, I'm never that type of person that's, like... Oh, you never watched Game of Thrones? Uh, I... Because I haven't watched either. <laughs> uh, I've seen some episodes, like, I'm not... How are you supposed to not take damage from this? Oh my god, please don't, please tell me there's a, there's a secret. Okay, whatever. Anyways. Um, but I just love, I love, I love those movies just because the story is so epic. I like... Well, what, when you said like, uh, when you said you're looking for emotional payoff, I'm looking more for an entertainment payoff mm. when I when I go and see the movie. Like I don't care if I end up crying or if it touches me or if I laugh the entire time. I'm just looking for an entertainment payoff where at the end I can say I thoroughly enjoyed what I watched. And with with like the Star Wars saga, with the Lord of the Rings saga. With the Indian Jones saga, like I, all those movies, like sure, some of them are better than others, some of them are worse than others, but I can at least say once I've once I've watched all of them, I thoroughly enjoyed the the journey that I went on to uh, with the characters that were there and with the story that was told. Like, yeah. Those are those are the type of movies I I really love to watch just because it's it's not an everyday thing like these long epics are just so entertaining and they keep you enthralled the entire time when they're good. Mm -hmm. 
when they're good. <laughs> like, I would not attune that to the Marvel movies now, because, I don't know, it's not... I, I agree with Rick, with, like, it's kind of... There's a lot of stuff to it now, it's kind of filler. Like, uh, last night, my roommates were watching, uh, they are watching Apocalypse, X-Men Apocalypse. And I came in halfway through and finished watching it with them. And honestly, it do the X-Men movies, I, th I kind of like way more than the Marvel movies, because with the X-Men movies, sure, the plot's a bit serious or whatever, but it's comic booky serious. Like, it's the same reason why I remember watching the X-Men cartoon, and they're like, it's the end of the world! And it's this whole thing, while I feel like the Marvel movies are taking it so seriously. Like, it's like somewhere between X-Men and Batman, like Chris Nolan's Batman, where it's like, this is how the world is, and this is what we have to deal with, and we need to protect them. While X-Men's like that, but you know it's goofy. You know it's superheroes. You know it's supposed to be not taken seriously. Like... I feel like with Marvel, they're trying to put in a lot of these messages into it with their characters. But with certain characters like Thor, it's like, how, how are you going to do that? He's a god. He cast lightning. Ooh, he fell in love with Natalie Portman. Cool. I just want to be entertained. And that's what, and like, even though Lord of the Rings and all these other movies do have messages and they do have these epic tales, it's all fantasy and I love that kind of feel. I love that it's this extravagant extravagant story that I'm never going to get to experience myself and I love seeing these characters go on it and their hardships and their fun yeah. So that that's my answer. I love those types of movies. That's a very long winded answer. <laughs> I like sagas. I like sagas. I like sagas. <laughs> no fair. It's, it's hard because I can't point out, like, specifically what. Although Return of the King, I felt was long. Uh, I'm, those I'm movies are long. Yo, I'm those so those down for are. six endings. Six endings. <laughs> they justified those six endings, okay? Uh, I just remember... Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, it's fine. Um, Tangent. Tangents. What do we do, a four or five? Um, I guess my four... Oh, that's funny. But my four, I guess I would just go to um, Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. Because it is a wonderfully sort of quirky mm -hmm. atmosphere that's got a lot of deep stuff again. Wes Anderson? It's Wes Anderson, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, which one? Uh, Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was not talking about it as much as his other films. This is the thing. People really loved Moonrise Kingdom. I was like, this is a step down. All right. His last two. He's gotten away from family drama, and that's where he shines. Ah. Okay. I mean, Moonrise Kingdom was a bit of a family drama, but not, not, to, the, not to the extent that... Life Aquatic is, or, or Thirteen Unlimited is, or um, or <laughs> Royal Tenenbaums yeah. is like that's that's to me where he shines in that specific ring, as it were. But the performances I get that in Life Aquatic are just spot on. Mm -hmm. the performances and soundtrack are great. I mean, everything else, if you know Wes Anderson, it looks like Wes Anderson. But yeah, I need to watch uh, Yeah, he, that's 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 another thing where talk about emotional. Pain. It it does it does talk like. <laughs> Where I, I enjoy those type of movies for the same reason I said of other movies. Because they're kind of out of reality. A little bit, yeah. With just how it's presented. It's a bit and, flat, yeah. And, and that's how in, how it's interesting to me. Yeah. Not exactly, you know, the style or anything, because a, a lot of people are just like, yeah, Western Asian style, blah, blah, blah. But it works <clears> for a story. But yeah, it works for a story, and that's what makes it interesting to me. That's what makes it entertaining. It's how it's presented. And speci specifically in Life Aquatic, they like. That was, that was. <laughs> <laughs> that like, spike. everything's so flatly sort of, all the characters are sort of flat emotionally, mm -hmm. more or less. They're kind of flippant with each other. Like, they do have emotions, obviously, but they're not really sharing them well. And, like, and you get a little bit of uh, emotion at the end. Like, you just need a little tinge, and then you're like, I'm fucking okay. bawling. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I um, <laughs> And then, what was I... Just play number five. Oh, I was gonna say uh, Cloud Atlas, basically. Oh, really? Shit. Yeah. I totally Going the that. other yeah. way of economy of story, a big old bloated story. Um, Yo, that movie's good though. But it's just wow, the concepts 
and the way that they fell, with, like they yeah. following through with it, they're really breaking ground. Yeah. So no, yeah, I forgot about that. Kick ass there. Was with multiple characters. I love. I really, actually, really love movies with uh, a Prince. cast playing multiple characters. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so that was something that I was like, Fuck yeah. yeah, and also the fountain. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, they're playing three characters. This is awesome. Um, that was the case. Oh, really? they do that in the movie? Yeah, they yeah, they're like, different. Have, they're different characters. Like an Asian person would be a white person, and the white person would be an Asian person. Like they played they, with makeup. Like they didn't pull that off as well. Just no, they because did not. Makeup limitations and. But you appreciated it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, I yeah. appreciate this. I, what what they did pull off more was the train change in gender. I found. Oh, what's the change in gender? Who changed the gender? Oh. Oh, a lot. Uh, a lot. Yeah, yeah, Hugo yeah. Weaving yeah. changed gender, which was again was not like the most grumpy, believable thing, but. Yeah. There's some there's some sort of surprising ones. If you go and look oh, look at the movie. IMDb page, they're like, what? She was this... Uh, then, um, the girl of Boone? I don't know. The yeah, one of the ladies is a, is a man in one of the... Oh, they, what, they, the they, they, No, no, I mean, like, oh, the, okay. the actors in the movie. Oh, okay. Um, they're like, yeah, they're, like, pretty progressive. Because this, like, this is the only movie I've seen of that. Like, when awesome. you watch it initially... Yeah. When I watched it initially, like, I, was in the, I watched it in theaters. And I remember yeah, yeah, going, like, was, oh, like, First in line in this one, like, I'm like I went in this. thinking like, what did I get myself into? Because I thought it was gonna be like utter garbage. Yeah. Because in the beginning, it's like Tom Hanks saying some crazy stuff, like weird special effects. But then by the end of it, did you find that like, oh shit, this all makes sense? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I how mean, do they do sort this? Sort of, but it also doesn't really but matter because like, that's not really what the story is about. It's not like, about making sense. There's like I think like the themes that they're like for some yeah. reason she's like doing this monologue at the end, and you're like, yes, I yeah. totally get what you're yeah. trying to say. Yeah. So that's oh, forgot about that film. So that would be number five in there. Yeah. Just keep keep doing stuff like that. Strange world out there. Like the, I wish the Wachowskis would. I love what they're doing. Like I actually I love what they're doing. It just sucks that that they are trying to make these epics and they're getting shafted because of the fact that they're so big and they're not given the ability to be like. Hey, let's make an epic out of this, or let's make a three movie story that oh can yeah really get involved in. So then we got Jupiter ascending. Yeah, and so yeah, we got to yeah. cram yeah basically three movies into two. Yeah, because yeah, they had a show bible for that. Yeah, like it made, yeah, it yeah. should be like a TV show or something else. Well, they they make me sense eight now. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's it's fine. It's also a really cool concept. Cool concept, and they but have I think it's gonna really well. thrive in second season. Yeah, because the thing is, though, anytime you have to do a high concept, like so much pages is spent on exposition. Yeah, it's spent on explaining. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. this is why this works this way, guys. He's a dog. Right, it's like somebody's yeah. watching it, but like, why can't he yeah. do that? It's like, well, this is specifically why. You see, in this universe, blah 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 blah. blah. Yeah, that's what basically Jupiter Ascending was all about. Like, we take yeah. this plasma that's this made from this and yeah. that. And I'm like, I. I yeah. It was very pretty, but it was not. Uh, Millikan was the worst in that format for me. I was just like, she's just. She just falls. And, like, she just, like, gets married. <laughs> like, literally, her story. She's like, the bee princess, but yeah. no one understands what that means. Yeah. It's <laughs> she controls bees. Like, <gasps> yeah. uh, um, uh, we had someone in chat. Say, uh, Don, Troy, Jay. Uh, hope they do a good job. Good job filming Ghost in the Shell. Hope they do a good job filming Ghost in the Shell. I don't. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> let's hope. I, ho I hope it. Doesn't who's directing it? I don't know. Because it depends on who's directing it. Because like I feel like if they have that mentality of like, like it's cyberpunk. It's like, like it feels like if they try to like Americanize it, it'd be mm. weird. Because I saw some like for like another film Akira, and they had like these um conceptual drawings of what they wanted yeah. so they wanted uh, Captain America dude Chris Evans to be like the good guy in it and they wanted to just play, uh... the main dude they had like a conceptual drawing of him in the outfit and they were going to name him something like Troy I don't know I'm not trying to think of Troy because I see Troy there <laughs> but like but, like they were going to name him some like American name and oh, like that's stupid and no. then like the, just, the bad guy was going to be another American name and it's going to be Joseph Gordon-Levitt and that's who they thought of I was like, this is weird. You just basically took everything cool about it and made it like, how can we make this American? So like, it thought like with Let's Ghost in the Shell, it's be like, how can we make this American? It's the audience they're trying to sell it to, but yeah. why? 
Yeah, I guess. Yeah, because the thing is, because I'm not going to relate to this. Yeah, exactly. Character is, unless they a... have a, unless their name's Dave. Yeah, that's, it's that's true bad. though. It's true. It's stupid. It's, it's, no, I don't think, I don't think that's but true. But there are people all. like that are like, I don't like this. It's I don't too, think like, that's true. That's yeah. going to be. That's we'll talk about this next. week. <laughs> That'll be our next yeah. next one. So, Why is racism? <laughs> Why is racism? <laughs> question oh, mark. Oh my god! All right. Well, All right. I think that's where we should wrap up. <laughs> Why is racism? No. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching the Unknown Air podcast. Again, if you've been watching on Twitch, make sure to follow us. If you catching this on YouTube or on iTunes or Google Play or SoundCloud, come watch us live. We're live every Saturday at six p.m. Eastern Standard Time on twitchtv films. Um, and yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And uh, we'll see you next week when Roddy's playing a game and Rick's going to come up with a topic. Oh, it's going to be wild. Alrighty. See y'all later. Play the anime music. <laughs> it's, there are, you skip the ad that happens before the anime music. This is great. Everybody loves this. Alright, there we go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>